Okay, I know that this question seems really confusing because there's a lot of text, but it's mostly stuff that you would have just kind of intuitively known just by looking at the picture. So it's a lot of repet repetition of things that you technically need to know but would have assumed anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. The one piece of information that we really need is that the area of ABC is 16 times as large as the other triangle DEF. Now, you should know from that that choice D is not the answer. It's not going to be the case that side AC is 16 times DF. That's way too easy. This is definitely a trap answer. Maybe if this was a question number two early on in the section where they're supposed to be really easy, then it might be that simple. But for anything medium to hard difficulty, no way is that going to be that answer. There's no math involved in that. So why would they ask it? We're going to need to do something else. My recommendation here is try to understand what's actually happening by arithmetizing and coming up with actual dimensions for these triangles. So what I would do here is I know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And these kind of look like right triangles. It says not drawn to scale, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume they're right triangles here. And think about the base and the height as the two sides that go straight up, height, and straight across, base. So what, what could I do here? Well, I'm going to say that the height is 2 and the base is 1. And I'm working with a small triangle first because I want to make it bigger for the 16 times. So I'm doing that because if I then plug those numbers into my formula, something really convenient happens. The 2 cancels out with the 1 half, and I just get that the area of this triangle is 1. So what would be the area of a triangle that's 16 times greater? Well, it would be 16 times 1, which is 16. So now I know that the big triangle, ACB, is going to be um, 1 half of base times height, but that's going to equal 16. Now I've got to be a little careful here because I do need to know that they are similar. So whatever happens to the increase, it's going to happen to both the base and the height. So maybe here is where we kind of start to guess and check a little bit. We think, okay, well, let's just see what would happen if I multiplied it by, let's say, 2, right? So if I did that, this is choice A, then I would have now a base of 2 and a height of four, right? Because two times two is four, one times two is two, and then we can calculate, well, that's just gonna give me an area of four, but we need an area of 16, so that's no good. So we can try to jump around and say, okay, I mean, let's, let's try another choice. And so let's try choice B. If we had an area where everything was multiplied by four, then this would be four, and this would be eight, and so, okay, base of 4, height of 8, half of 4 is 2, 2 times 8 is 16, bingo, that's the 1. So there are ways to do this kind of conceptually, but I never trust conceptual algebra. It's way too risky. The SAT is really good at using that kind of thing against us. I mean, that's honestly why choice D is such a great trap. It's very logical, but it's not true. It's logical that if we increase the area by 16, then all the dimensions would increase by 16. But that's just not how it works. And so letting us have numbers lets us see the change more easily. It's much easier on our brain, and it's much more likely to get us the right answer.